a viewer of mine had left a comment very graciously, and I thank him for that, that the M18 battery-operated vacuum, this is model number 0970-20, is able to take a vacuum bag as the top comes off. Apparently, you can clip a bag into this part here, and then when you set the top on, it will engage the bag. In the design of it as well, they shift the filter off to one side of the unit to give more room for the bag. I went out and got this vacuum, but it comes with an adapter hose. And the hose clips in on the outside, and it has onboard tool storage, like the other one. And here is the well for the battery. Unfortunately, this is where the problem comes in. In the previous vacuum, clip it on. Fortunately, it doesn't allow the battery to sit nearly deep enough to engage the contacts. And just for giggles, if I try the unit that didn't work on the other one, it's the same problem, but even more so. You can see that isn't coming close to engaging. Even this little battery here, that seems to go all the way down, but it doesn't seem to engage. So here's the adapter that didn't work with the other vacuum. If you open it up, see there's a little bit of a circuit board up here, and the wires do cross. So whatever was plus over here for DeWalt on the same side as negative for Milwaukee and vice versa. But I can mount the battery like so, and very carefully... And it does work. So now what I need to do is come up with a clever way to modify this. So and to be clear, this is the side that engages the vacuum. What I need to do is build this in a way where this side here sits higher. I need this end over here to sit up higher. If you open up the vacuum, there's a screw that goes into the boss here and through the case up here. And then there's an ear here on the motor that looks like it would also interfere with the battery in the cavity. But unfortunately, even if you do this, I'm not entirely sure it's going to solve the problem. With this particular adapter that I've taken apart, when I put this into the vacuum, this lip here is pretty much touching the floor of the cavity. And if I attach a battery onto it, you can see that I still have a problem. This, with this adapter, the battery, the DeWalt battery, is still going to bottom out on the floor of the cavity before this guy fully engages. And with this other adapter, there's a little bit more room. That one goes down and is pretty close once again to the floor of the cavity. And it's kind of the same issue. This guy still won't fully allow engagement because the DeWalt battery simply sits too low. So I took this apart a little further. And this is the receptacle for the uh, Milwaukee battery. And that snaps in there. There's this piece of something like nylon. That snaps in here and a screw goes here. And then this whole thing slides into a channel here. And there's a screw here and one on the other side. So another option might be to find a way to mount this. Mount it so this assembly is sitting lower down in the bat in the as we're looking at it now, and it means it would raise it up because this is flipped over, and that would bring the battery packs up. And that looks like it might be a possibility. It almost looks like you could just trim the ears off of this and get it to slide down further. And there may also be a possibility to take the end of the adapter that fits the DeWalt battery and somehow retrofit this thing in here like so and then you wouldn't even need this. So as I was fiddling with this, that uh, solder joint right there had failed. This looks like it's plated. It's obviously very silvery. It's ever so slightly magnetic. And I very carefully filed this corner. And under magnification, it looks uh, like a brass. So I have two soldering irons here heating up. And I'm going to see if I can get enough heat on this with a little bit of flux. Get that joint to reflow. And if one iron won't do it, maybe the two irons in conjunction will be able to get enough heat in there. Well, it seems to have worked. One iron was enough to get heat on it. So here's kind of a cardboard mock-up of what I'm thinking. 
I have this cardboard with a couple screws to locate it and it's going to sit there and then I've got four other marks where these four holes line up and if I line them up kind of like so this is how it's going to fit together so this is the side that slides down into the vacuum that's the Milwaukee side and you can see when this is sitting in the holder then the DeWalt battery which attaches to this side will be sitting higher and I need it to be very thin and this side will screw into the plastic but this side they're just through holes I'm gonna have to uh, come up with another idea it's either gonna have to screw into the steel which doesn't give you a lot of threads or I'm gonna have to tap it I have this piece of aluminum it's a half inch by a sixteenth inch Well, for about the 25th time today, I had this backwards. It's supposed to go together this way. Not my best work, but it looks functional. Well, here it is put together. I ended up replacing these with number 4 by 3 8 uh, wood screws, and I was able to countersink them a little bit to get them a little more flush. And I wanted these to be machine screws with uh, tapped holes, but that didn't work out. So these are number 5 wood screws that don't have a problem cutting threads into aluminum and I got the same thing down on these two holes and I have to admit it feels really solid and just to be clear this is the adapter that worked with the previous vacuum this side is the Milwaukee side and the DeWalt side slides in that way the one that I modified this one did not work with the other vacuum and what I ended up doing this is the Milwaukee side here that slides in and the DeWalt battery slides down onto it like so what I ended up doing was this was flipped the other way so I took it apart and I flipped the side and slid it up and now the wires aren't a problem the wires are plenty long enough in this orientation and there's a close-up you got some exposed circuit board in there and and now for the moment I've been waiting for, at least for a while. That snaps in. The DeWalt battery. And... Well, I'm kind of happy with that. I don't know how well this is going to hold up to use and abuse, time will tell, but I do think I'll go out and buy some bags for this guy, which is the whole reason why I purchased it. And it's funny, the longer I work on this, the more irritated I get with DeWalt for simply not making what most people feel to be a competent vacuum to begin with. But that's a side note. And for the record, this is the 4 amp hour battery, and that's about the biggest that's going to fit in there. The first vacuum that I had that I did the videos on cost about $100. This thing clocks in at about $200, which is kind of getting up there. Then $20, $30 or so for the adapter and countless hours modifying it. So before I get any farther, I thought I would have an ask for those of you out there watching this. The vacuum comes with two accessories but there is no wand on it so any vacuuming you do basically you have your hand right next to the attachment so to vacuum a large area in this manner would be cumbersome at best it also comes with this adapter and how that works is you would unscrew this end and screw this end on and they claim that this fits a host of different tools and the only real tool I have to test that on is this sander here by DeWalt and it fits but it doesn't really snap in or anything so I'd have to maybe tape it in place so that's that's not terrible but hardly ideal these are the two sizes uh, in the world of rigid vacuums and this adapter obviously doesn't fit very well here but I'd like to have a more elegant solution I have this old wand from I think this was a shop vac and it's the same thing that fits but not doesn't snap in and that would have to be fastened somehow and on the end of the shop vac this is the old attachment to fit it and many years ago we bought this attachment for our house vacuum and that also fits the shop vac and we have this old wand and lo and behold this attachment fits 
as of course does the shop vac. So years ago this seemed to be a relatively standard size in vacuums and the Milwaukee of course doesn't seem to fit it. So I don't know if anybody out there has an elegant solution to get a wand like this or a couple sections that might fit the Milwaukee system well. And of course what you really want is this end that holds these pieces to have a wand that goes between them, something like this. But that doesn't really fit, and that end doesn't really fit. And it's a similar story for this guy. So perhaps Milwaukee makes a wand like this that fits, I just need to find it. So I went into the Milwaukee website to see if there was a solution to the wand issue. And I didn't find one, and I did find other people uh, venting a similar frustration in the comments. And, you know, I received a lot of comments on people voicing their frustration over the offering from DeWalt. And I have to admit, I share in that. I, I didn't look at the DeWalt vacuum directly. It wasn't easy for me to get my hands on it. And based on others' reviews, I just went with this route. Well, as always, I appreciate you stopping by and seeing what my latest project is all about. I hope this little hodgepodge Franken battery assembly gave you some good ideas. Perhaps you've got some suggestions on how to improve on it. Got any comments? Please like, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Thanks.